Field. Larry Anguasano reporting for Aviation Consumer Magazine from a cold Auburn, Maine. The Cessna 172 behind me is about three quarters of a way through a Dynon certified glass panel upgrade. Now what's interesting about the Skyview installation in a certified airplane like a 172 is that Dynon has opened the installation to A&P mechanics with IA credentials. That's exactly what this aircraft is doing here at Skyward Aviation. Now before we uh, go fly this airplane with the new Dynon system, let's talk to Tom Ward to find out about the installation and uh, what it's taken to get this job done. This airplane here is uh, an older uh, aircraft, it's a 172N. Uh, it had all the old steam gauges in it. Um, we upgraded uh, everything, including the circuit breakers, the switches. We removed all the old uh, wiring that was in there, which it had uh, bundles and bundles of fuses inside there. So we've removed all of that equipment. Uh, we've gone through everything, make sure that the circuit breakers are the right sizes. Uh, we did overlays on all those pieces as well. Um, and for me as an A&P IA, um, starting with something like this, I've, I've already done a lot of installations on for engine monitoring systems. And that same thing applies to this and it's pretty much straightforward. Uh, the biggest thing I found was the learning curve is um, you're really dealing with a lot of smaller wires that I've never had to really deal with before and there's a learning curve there uh, but I'd say for most it's not going to be that difficult to really get into that and uh, and just go through it step by step is what I tried to do and making this a complete glass cockpit type of thing which really uh, I mean a new 172 is what 350,000 Versus this, that's you know you're probably talking closer to forty-five or fifty thousand for a complete installation with a Garmin six hundred and fifty or Avidyne or whatever you choose for a secondary comm. So this Dynon installation is complete. It's a little bit warmer because this airplane's been down for a good amount of time to get the retrofit done. I'm here with Jeff Van West, and before we talk about the Dynon system in general. Let's go down to the ground and talk to Jeff a little bit about what influenced his flying club's decision to go with this Dynon suite. Then we'll come back up here at the cockpit and uh, look at a few things that stand out uh, with this Dynon suite. Hi, I'm Jeff Van West and I've done a bunch of these videos from the other side of the camera, but today I'm here because I'm a member of the Bald Eagle Flying Club of Portland, Maine, been in continuous operation since 1956, and this is one of our airplanes. It is finally flying again in mid-April with a new Dynon Skyview install. This has been a long <laughs> and somewhat arduous process, but not just because of the Dynon itself. Uh, we bought this airplane when it was a great airplane at the time. We got it with a 180 horsepower upgrade, a power flow exhaust, has a stole kit on it. We redid the interior and we take the airplanes all over the place. Uh, this airplane actually will be going to Canada on Saturday. We take it into the back country. So the airplane, it, it was a great airplane. It is valuable to us as a club as well. And it flies beautifully, um, engines running well, all that good stuff. It came with a fantastic panel that was like cutting edge of 1999 with an old MX-20 MFD and an approach certified GPS. Uh, it had an STEC 50 autopilot with altitude hold and we were nursing it along trying to decide what to do. We decided we're going to put in two Garmin G5s, we're going to put in a new GTN GPS. Uh, we'll figure out how to interface that with our autopilot and we got the money together, the club got buy-in. It was 2017, just before Oshkosh, and we said, you know, let's wait and make sure nothing new and great comes out at Oshkosh. And at Oshkosh that year, Dynon announced their certified install for 172s, of which ours was one. And suddenly, for now, for maybe $10,000 more, we could add a two-axis autopilot, engine monitoring, have a full glass panel with glass backup, get rid of all of our legacy gauges, and we put it to the club and they said, yeah. So we came up with even more money and then had to wait for the STC to come through. It finally did. Uh, then it was flying season again for us because we're in Maine. We didn't want to take the plane down during the summer. So that gets us to last fall 
when we had scheduled a block of time, about five, six weeks when the plane was gonna be down. And then we had an incident with another airplane that took it offline. We couldn't take two airplanes offline at the same time, so we had to delay even further. That caused even more delays, and the plane was actually in and out of the shop, fitting in around other stuff from about late fall until now, when it's flying again. But it is finally almost complete, and it is a great system. So the system we put in is, is kind of the bare bones. It's a single screen, couldn't come up with the money for two screens. It's a touch screen, which is fantastic. We decided to go with a GTN 650 just because we're a club of 80 members right now, about 50 people actively flying. And given the other options that were out there, this was the simplest one to use after we pulled some people. It's sort of like operating an iPhone. We retained one of the radios from the previous install that was still working well, and everything else came out of the airplane. And when I say everything else, I really do mean everything else. The plane actually lost 35 pounds when we, by the time we reweighed it at the end of this whole process. So we picked up some useful load as well. Uh, like I said, it's a single 10 inch touch screen. It does everything. So it's got the PFD, the MFD, the engine instruments all in one display. Uh, we don't have a separate engine instrument cluster. So if we lose this screen, we also do lose our engine instruments. Uh, would be advantage of having a two screen system. It's a little bit busy, but uh, it works surprisingly well and it's phenomenally configurable. You start up the airplane and it'll tell you if the, there's a mismatch between how much fuel it sees by the fuel gauges versus how much fuel is in the fuel computer and allow you to adjust the two of them. Uh, the system is super configurable. We actually did a bunch of our own flight testing, so we were the ones who went up and tuned the autopilot. We were able to do the compass swing and things like that, all under the watchful eye of the IA who was putting in the system, but we were as a club able to be really involved and as owners, and it also helped bring down the cost of the install because that was labor time that we did for fun and, uh, and he didn't have to do. You know, another just thing that appealed to us as a club and made it worth investing in the airplane is we just made an airplane that looked so much nicer. The Royal Light plastic is gone. We've got this nice panel from Thrust Flight down in Texas. Uh, we were able to you know clean up all the switches and and buttons and when somebody comes to the club and you know do you want to join do you want to fly our airplanes we show them this airplane uh, granted it still needs a paint job on the outside but we show them the inside of this airplane and they're like wow that's a beautiful airplane yeah i i want to join that club and fly their planes and that's how we survive so that's pretty important um the fact that we got engine instrumentation is fantastic. I was really happy that we now have a carb air temperature gauge. Um, we can actually see fuel flow and actual gallons remaining from a fuel totalizer. We can even see you know, how efficiently the airplane's running. It has lean assist, which on an O360 like ours isn't super helpful, but it would be helpful on other systems. And then the other thing that I love is for the display, I have the ability to do just about anything I want in terms of the whole display itself. Like I could um, put the engine instruments on one side. This can be really helpful for you know doing training or working with a private student and you know really want to get into how the engine operates. I can, um, if I want, go into a whole setup and get rid of the bottom band if I want. Put engine on, uh, excuse me, engine on the side, engine over there. I can even go into the display, actually no, I'll go into menu, excuse me, PFD tools. We can make a six pack. We can get rid of the synthetic vision if we want to. Uh, we can put a G meter on if we want to. <laughs> if it's a nice turbulent day, any of those things, it's like just a super, super configurable airplane. So one of my favorite little things is I can take a screenshot at any time in flight. It's great for training. It's great for debugging and at any point, I can send that to a USB drive. That's how we update the databases, but also I can put those files on a computer. We can talk about them later. So Jeff, on the moving map display, we've got a green ring. What is that? The green ring is our glide ratio, or, or how far we can glide, if you will. It's wind corrected, so you see we're not quite centered in it because we do have, well, winds are kind of light and variable. I guess we're moving more to the center. It's, uh, but it's, sometimes it's really far offset and pretty much if anything is inside that ring, based on the glide characteristics of this plane, we could reach it. It doesn't take into account terrain, 
So uh, if there's a mountain between the two points, you would have to glide through it, but it does give you a really good idea. If there was an airport inside that, you'd know you could reach that airport. So this airplane, before the upgrade, had an STEC 50, but the Dynon autopilot is far more automated. It's perfectly integrated. You know, the STEC uh, had a separate autopilot, and you had to tell it whether you were on GPS steering or you weren't on GPS steering, and so forth. This is fully integrated. You can actually go right off the screen, which is really the easiest way, I find. You know, I can change my, my speed. Actually, altitude just captured here. So I can uh, have a vertical speed by indicated airspeed, vertical speed. I can fly a heading. I can have it hold a track. Obviously, I can fly a kind of nav source. And it's truly two axes. So I have vertical navigation, and I've got lateral navigation, and I can have something in play and then something else armed. So I was climbing at a certain speed, and I told it to capture 3,500, and it did. But this autopilot doesn't have envelope protection, but it does have a level button. Sure, that's the, the reason we keep that red switch on there to make sure the autopilot servos are all powered up because we do have a lot of VFR-only pilots in the club. If they were to get to a, a situation here, and for those of you watching at home, I have cleared the area before doing this. Uh, they were to get to a situation, the airplane gets into kind of an unusual attitude. They can just reach over and push that level button. My hands are up here now. Autopilot's working. Got to watch for that traffic that's over there five miles out. And we're back. And now the autopilot's on. I can put a heading mode in. Resume your navigation, sir, and squawk to Put in a new heading. Thank you very much, sir. Two CL, you I'm on autopilot. Get myself out of trouble. What's unusual about the autopilot for people who've flown autopilots with a real approach mode is it has no approach mode. There's just nav. And that's everything. With POR tracking, a GPS tracking, a GPS approach, an ILS approach, and you have to manually arm vertical nav. That's what actually arms your glide slope. So the all of us who had flown many other autopilots, we got it to an approach and it didn't capture the glide slope. And we're like, what's going on here? Why well, want to do it? it? It has to be manually armed. So the laundry list, the airplane has ADS-B in and out. It has uh, Wi-Fi to iPads for bringing that ADS-B data and soon the weather as well to the iPad and the AHARS. It's got a backup uh, display. It has an AOA indicator so we can fly by angle of attack which is great if you're going into a small strip somewhere and we have the stole kit. It's amazing how slow the airplane can fly. It has a uh, full two-axis autopilot driven by either the GTN 650 or the Skyview's internal GPS. The Skyview has a backup battery. The backup has a backup battery. If you were to lose all the avionics, the Skyview has its own internal GPS that you can navigate by. So it's got a lot of redundancy in the system. And this display, this HDX that's in the airplane, it just, it, it feels a lot more robust than the earlier systems that are uh, in our RV-12 and someday we may even upgrade the RV-12 to be like this one. The Flying Club's got their airplane back, equipped with this fancy Dynon suite. What's the takeaway? Uh, how did the economics look? And what advice might you have for other owners thinking about doing a transformation of this size? We had budgeted somewhere north of $40,000 up to about forty-four to fly it down to Texas and have them do it. And uh, it seems like a lot, but for an airplane in our flying club, uh, that, that was worth it. And it looks like, I'd say don't quote me on this, but you're kind of recording me so that is quoting, but so far it looks like this is going to come in at about 38, 39. So we did save a little bit of money doing it with our own IA, but it's really hard to say because he, I, I know, was was somewhat generous with his time because he was learning it and he wants to do more of them. So, uh, and we also did a lot of the work ourselves that somebody else might not want to do because we wanted to, we were interested. So, uh, professional, not professional, I would say if it's an IA who's never done one before, uh, you're definitely not going to save anything. And maybe you're asking for some headaches. If you find someone who has experience and done a few of them, that could really work out in your favor and certainly the places like Thrust Flight uh, they know what they're doing. And Dynam was great for, uh, you know, support, and we definitely needed it at times. You know, the guy needed it, they got on the phone with us, and, and we were able to, to work everything out. In the end, uh, the Dynon system versus, like, the new G3X Touch that's now an option, um, I 
think this is a little cheaper and it's a little more configurable. Um, the other system I haven't flown, but uh, you know, the fact that it's available for so many other airplanes, boy, I, if we got an airplane that this wasn't available for, I wouldn't hesitate to put one of those in. But I'm pretty happy with uh, what we have so far. My other piece of advice is don't try and save little bits of money. Uh, we had parts of our pedostatic system that were working fine with our old analog instruments. We didn't replace them. We had to go back and replace them once we had more sophisticated instruments and detected leaks the other instruments couldn't even do. Got the plane open, replace every old hose, replace every old cable. Uh, don't try and save a penny because it's going to cost you many, many, many pounds later. So go all in. Go all in, for sure. And you can read a full report on the Dynon Certified Suite in an upcoming issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. For Aviation Consumer, I'm Larry Anglisano, and thanks a lot to Jeff Van West for helping with the field report.